Alrighty then, have we been sleeping on Sephagoth and what he brings to Warframe? Well, probably not. Our beloved boy definitely could use some tuning. However, his latest augment really pegged him up a notch to deliver a build capable of blitzing through enemies within the steel path. But before that, let's have a rundown of everything that you need to know. As always, guys, timestamps are added beneath the video. Starting things off with his abilities, so let's go ahead and look at that passive. Whenever Sephagoth dies, he leaves just his shadow form behind. Whilst in this form, you can lunge and attack enemies to resurrect Sephagoth by collecting five enemy souls. If you fail to collect enough and his shadow dies, then this will count as a usual death. However, it's quite forgiven, especially against big packs of enemies. And collecting souls will also heal the shadow, as this is one of the shadow abilities as well, but we'll cover that later. Overall, it's a really good passive in my opinion. So speaking of the shadow, Sephagoth has quite a few unique passives to him, but besides from the death mechanic one we spoke of, the other more important mechanic is his death well gauge that he has. This well can be built with kills affecting enemies with Sephagoth's abilities, and when over 75%, Sephagoth can transform into his shadow with new abilities and playstyle, but we'll cover that just a little bit later. Sephagoth's first ability is Reap. When cast, Sephagoth's shadow will be sent from him outwards, dealing radiation damage to enemies it comes into contact with. But more importantly, any enemy touched by Reap will suffer extra damage vulnerability to all incoming sources. So Reap is kind of like a debuff. Any enemy also affected by Reap, when killed, will fill up Sephagoth's death well passive with a 5% increase per enemy killed. The shadow, when sent out, will mostly go in a straight path if left untouched. However, if you do ADS and aim down your weapon's sight, this will increase the speed of the shadow and make it go to the point where you are aiming at. Now for this video, Reap is our most important ability due to it being the only ability that has an augment for it as of right now. So this fits into a lot of builds, so keep that in mind as we proceed forwards. Sephagoth's second ability is So. Sephagoth plants death seeds into all enemies within his radius, and when planted, those enemies receive a true damage over time ticking. Just like his previous ability, any enemy killed whilst under the effects of So will also build up Sephagoth's death well passive with another 5% per enemy killed. Following a so cast, you can use Sephagoth's Reap ability to create an explosion, ripping out current enemy health with blast damage. This combination works much better against enemies with no defenses, but otherwise it's mostly used to help us build up the death well passive much faster. Sephagoth's third ability is Gloom, and this ability is one of many players' favorites. When cast, Sephagoth pulses out a radial wave that will slow any enemies entering this aurid area, and any enemies that are damaged by by either Sephagoth or his allies within the wave, you will receive lifesteal with each and every attack, given a great method of survivability. The main thing here to note is that both the slow and the lifesteal percentages scale with strength. More importantly, you can slow enemies up to a maximum of 95%, which is absolutely gross if you can build with that in mind. So Gloom is also Sephagoth's subsumed ability within the Helmet, which can then be fused into other Warframes, giving them the slow and lifesteal combination. So so Warframes such as, I don't know, Inneros, which are purely health related, can take an ability like this and massively benefit off of it. Sephagoth's fourth ability is Exalted Shadow. If the Death Well passive is above 75% filled, Sephagoth can enter his shadow form and take on a new appearance as it, new abilities, and a melee focused style. As of right now, being within his shadow form drains his Death Well at 1% per second, and unfortunately there is no way to affect the drain, but I do hope down the line that we could possibly get an augment that allows us to stay in this form for longer. Now that we're in his shadow form, we have three new abilities to look at, which are Shadow's first ability is Embrace. Shadow will use his long ghostly claws to pull in enemies from a distance, grouping them and leaving them hovering for a while, which scales off duration. This is your grouping based ability. Shadow's second ability is Consume. Now this ability is exactly the same as your passive on death ability. Shadow dashes towards enemies, knocking the souls out of them and healing for a percentage of its health whilst also dealing radiation damage. Shadow's third ability is Death Harvest. Now, this ability is exactly the same as Sephagoth's first ability, Reap. So it's the same concept. However, this ability isn't sending out a shadow of its own, because you are the shadow. Instead, it's an AoE radio ability cast around you, the shadow, debuffing any nearby enemies and applying that damage of vulnerability. It's important to mention that this Death Harvest ability, due to it being the same as Sephagoth's Reap ability, means that this will also benefit from that Reap augment as well so keep that in mind 
and Shadow's fourth ability is Reunite. A quick cast and you can end your Shadow form and re-enter Sephiroth's body at no cost. So during the time spent within your Shadow form, if Sephiroth has a Drain per second ability, such as Gloom, he can apply it and it can continue draining in the background whilst you enter your Shadow form state. So this means that you can benefit from all of the slows and heals in which Gloom gives you, turning Sephiroth into Supportagoth. Alrighty then, that's a lot of abilities, but what about those builds then? Okay, so we're going to go and kick things off with what I feel is the strongest build first. The Shadow Haze Augment will be the focus of this build, and all of this will be centered heavily around debuffing enemies, buffing your weapons, and then killing them with your weaponry. The Shadow Haze Augment, when applied, will now also benefit our weaponry with extra critical chance scaling on top of the damage vulnerability. Furthermore, enemies affected by Reap or Death Harvest abilities, when killed, will will now also send out up to three new shadow forms in which seek out enemies giving you that quality of life debuffing without you having to focus on their directions. Now this is all good and dandy. I will go ahead and say that it's still AI controlled if you will. Basically it's not super consistent and sometimes they may get stuck on objects but it is what it is and for now it's still a great augment to put onto your builds. From there the build is pretty much flexible in the ways that you guys prefer to scale it so let's have a quick rundown of that. Duration is for longer lasting buffs and debuffs so if you aren't killing quick enough, apply more to go and help yourself out. Efficiency is always debated upon because I understand not everyone has the luxury of max out arcanes and max out focus schools, etc, etc. So if you need more efficiency, then pop it in wherever it can help you. Range, in my opinion, isn't something that you need an awful lot of here, but it's also not something that you really want to hurt a lot either. Simply keeping it at 100% is completely fine if you prefer to. And finally, we got that strength. Well, this is your go-to for better debuff percentages, more damage to your abilities, but more importantly, bigger buffs for those Helminth infused abilities. And for this build, I recommend subsumables that combo with the debuffs and scale weapon damage output. Examples of those would be Zaku's Zata's Whisper, Rhino's Roar, or even Mirage's Eclipse. Now, there are other options for you to go and throw in if you want to, but those are just a few to go and help you get the ball rolling. I'm going to go and quickly mention here that I truly believe Sephagoth is one of the best Warframes to invest Umbraformers into, as all of his builds can benefit massively from Umbral mods to help his survival and damage output. However, if you would like some friendly advice, we're about a year away, give or take, from Sephagoth Prime. So I would much rather wait until then to invest any Umbra formers into him. However, once his Prime version is out, oh boy, it's Umbra City, baby. As for his Arcanes, I would advise to slot in whatever your build feels like it's missing. Anything here is going to help your energy output. You can add in Molt Arcanes to increase duration or strength. There are Weapon Arcanes to increase fire rate or weapon damage or finally throw in survival arcanes if you feel like you need that extra help in hand. Archon Shards. Whenever we invest the Archon Shards, they do go and share across all builds in mind, so it can be hard to keep them situationally focused. So if you prefer to keep it simple, like myself here, then I recommend Shards that would be like two times Amber Shards for cast speeds, especially in that shadow form. Those animations are really, really long, and three times Crimson Shards for either strength or duration, but that's entirely your call. Besides from that, if you want to play around with them, be my guest and do what works better for you. Ability rotations. Thankfully this build is pretty simple since it's mostly a running gun style and with my current build in mind the first thing I want to go and do is build up my energy. So I usually go and do that by bringing the Xenuric Focus School and I'll cast its first ability to go and give me some energy over time. I might go and hit a Cradle 2 to check for some lucky energy orbs but otherwise from there I usually go in this order. So to begin we're going to go and apply the weapon damage buff ability first. In my case that's Sartre's Whisper to increase my weapon damage output. So there isn't really much of a build happening at the current moment so I rely on the strength of my weapons with the increased damage from this ability to hopefully just melt my way through the crowds and build up energy levels so I can and start scaling things like my Molt Augmented Arcane. From there, casting Sephagoth's first ability, Reap, will help the weapons even further, sending out those shadows to apply that damage vulnerability and add in extra crit chance only but helps my weapons even more. So within my build, I do actually have the So second ability available, but I'll be honest with you guys here. I mostly only use this for potentially shield gating purposes, as with this build, I won't really be using Sephagoth's shadow, so I have no reason to increase Deathwell passive in mind and that's really where so excels 
So to put this briefly, we can actually ignore so. But if you do have the energy, it does add some extra true damage over time to enemies. So it doesn't hurt applying it every so often to whittle enemies down. And if you do have mods like Brief Respite, that's where the chill gating can come in. Finally, we have Gloom. Ideally, I want this ability to be on at all times if I can. But since it's so costly with energy, I'd rather have my other abilities available so that I can have the strongest defense by having the strongest offense. You see, can't be killed if enemies are already dead. However, once I have some energy built up, then the gloom helps me survive as I travel into big, dense packs of mobs, slowing them down and helping me with a little life steal in return. Keep in mind, if you do have any arcanes or focus schools that can also build up strength, then don't forget to build that up, then reapply your gloom ability with the true potential that it has. Now, this build can be quite squishy. We don't have a lot of defenses to play around with except gloom, so positioning and killing is key. But even such as, his death passive is just too good to get us back into the fight. So don't worry if you go down. Just pray and hope that you can at least find five easy enemies to go and pick off. Dealing like an hour in Steel Path Survival is absolutely no issue with a build like this. Weapon builds. So I'll quickly just throw up two of the weapons that are used a lot these days because in case someone asks for any kind of pairings, here you go. The Lateran and Cardin is a generic Steel Path scaling build. Planet your damage output and breathing room to allow for any kind of scaling that I want to go and stay in the mission for. It's also good for the single targets if an Eximus unit is too tanky or if an Acolyte needs to be chunked down, this is what I will use. And then the other weapon I go and use is the secondary Occupor. Now, I already have a video on this, but this weapon is so damn good in the hands of weapon-related ability builds and it only gets better when you pair it with them. So take either of these two weapons and honestly, you will melt through these crowds. Now, build number two is an Exalted Shadow build. And this build is one that, although I really want to recommend I unfortunately cannot justify the positional strength and utility of the shadow form itself. To put simply, the shadow is a cool idea and it can be fun at times. However, due to it having a timer on it, you're going to have to hybrid a build regardless. I cannot simply focus everything onto the shadow because there are just too many situations where I need to build the passive death well up first before I can jump into the shadow state gameplay. With this in mind, it's with regret to say that the best build is basically whacking on every Every survival mod that you possibly can find and use. This would at least give you way more room for error and allow you to be less punished when running a build like this. I feel one of the closest builds that I could get outside of that concept idea of survival was to run a supporter goth build where I build up all passives that need to be built up like multi augmented, building up Sephiroth's energy and then apply things like gloom with drain per second and pop on the silence helminth ability to counter Eximus units or acolytes from using their abilities to my shadow, keeping my shadow alive for much longer. You see, there's an acolyte called Violet and it also has the silence, it's easy to remember, violence and silence, has the silence ability that can actually send you back to Sephagoth. See, that's just not on. So we've got to counter him first before he counters us. And that's where our silence comes in. So once I've got all of these abilities and passives up and I've built up enough of Death Wells passive, I'll switch over to the shadow and then start messing around. So since I'm going to be playing around Sephagoth as my passive support, it's advised to play around his range zone. So range is a must for the Sephagoth build. I can pull in enemies to towards me with the embrace ability and then I can use death harvest to proc the shadow haze augment and then just start killing enemies with the shadow claws and honestly it does good damage there isn't really much wrong with the offensiveness of this build it's just the defense and having to switch back and rebuild that is the part that bothers me so I mentioned this earlier but personally I would really like a shadow augment for Sephagoth in which I can remain in a shadow state longer so long as I am active with killing outputs such as killing enemies with his shadow claws I think that that would personally help, but besides from that, a little number tweaking to buff a few percentages here and there, I also wouldn't really mind. It would help the survival and utility of this build a little bit better. Overall though, it's a cool gimmick, but when it comes down to the truth, most people that I talk to about Sephagoth builds are simply subsuming off his fourth ability and calling it a day. I think that that shouldn't be the case, so I hope his shadow can get a little love in the future. Up on screen are the other builds that are going to run with him. One is his shadow builds, and the other is two builds that I go ahead and use 
use for claws. You can go for either of them for swift, quick attacks and build up combos and then maybe nuke with your times 12 combo. Or you can go for the heavy attack builds and literally just melt any enemies in front of you. Both of these builds work completely fine and they both deal a great amount of damage. Take whichever one suits your playstyle. Now, there are actually quite a few things I learned about Sephagoth in which I think could help some people take their build further and you guys don't have to do the testing because I've already pulled my hair out enough over this. For those people, I will put them on the screen right now. And if you know of any tips or tricks yourself that you have also tested, then leave a cheeky comment below and help others understand this Warframe better. Right, so then guys, that was quite a mouthful, but I think we're just about done here. I'm sure I've forgotten something. But for now, it's definitely more than enough to help you guys get going with your Sephagoth builds and something to take into end game related content such as Steel Path. Overall, how have you guys been finding Sephagoth? What changes would you guys like to see to this Grim Reaper? And what kind of builds have you guys been running lately? But thank you guys for watching today's video. If you did enjoy the video, then hit it with a cheeky like and share the video with a friend. If you're new to the channel, subscribe for more builds. But until next time, I'll be seeing you guys again in the next video.